raining and um, hopefully the rain holds off so we can load the trailer without it throwing. Yes? So we have made it to our destination. So we're going to be picking up some hydronic solar panels. So that'll help heat um, our water to our boiler for our farm. So we are picking it up from another farm. Here are some of the panels. Uh, they're pretty large. Uh, I think there's 36 of them. I think maybe a couple of them might be damaged, but not sure. Uh, this one here is damaged. But uh, yeah, it also has, I think, a, a little boiler set up for it. So the guy's going to be here pretty soon and we get to look over everything and get it loaded on the trailer. Babies. Babies. Gorgeous New York State. I suppose we are almost done loading. I haven't done any of the loading, but there's like this giant tank that is attached to the system and we think there's significant amount of glycol in it, like over like 600 gallons. So we're trying to consider how we get that glycol home. I don't think we can do it this run, but glycol is very expensive. Getting there, a lot of panels, a lot of parts. It's gonna be an interesting setup when we get around to it. It's getting I think I got it figured out. All right, so bolted on down here. These two lines go into the top of the tank. These are your supply lines that come down from the roof. Come down over here. This is probably one zone. This is Prius a return. This is this is the return. That's the supply. Well, it says return. Labeled return. It says return. So there's three tanks. Go to this other little expansion tank, and then that goes to the back. Now it just becomes strap gate. Busted knuckles. Covered in glycol. Cat. Child. Fun last few hours. <laughs> so we're all done. That took way longer than we anticipated. I don't know. I guess maybe four or five hours. I have no idea how long we've been here or what time it is. So um, we got it all on. Um, we left some things behind because they weren't going to fit, but we got everything we could. Uh, we spent 1500 bucks and got all of this stuff, which will hopefully heat our homestead for years to come. Um, it's going to take me some time to go ahead and try to rebuild all of this into an entirely different setup, but um, this will allow us not to have to burn so many trees. So, All right, let's be... go get food. All right, let's go get food. Are you recording me? Yeah. Okay, so we made it down the street and we stopped at a pub to go ahead and just uh, take a breather and just uh, get some food. How's your finger? That's all beat up. My knee's beat up. I've got other scrapes and gouges. It was fun. So last night we made it back. A little after dark so check to see everything made it all right hopefully we didn't break any of these uh, panels because all the tops are all glass here so far looks okay Looks like everything made it for the most part.
So we just went ahead and got this big pallet over here cleared off. It's a nice solid oak one. This thing's like 14 feet long. And I plan on taking off all those panels. I think there's like 36 or 37 panels. And I'm gonna make a simple like two by four cage over this so that we can slide them in and keep them upright. I think that's probably the best way to store these because each one weighs 93 pounds. And if we were to stack them flat all the way up, I'd be worried about the one at the bottom getting crushed. So I think on end here, stacked all the way down is probably the best bet. So I'm gonna work on getting this caged while Kristen gets the trailer unstrapped. So we are about halfway through. I told Hank this is the worst part of finding a Facebook Marketplace deal is having to unload it with two people. I think it's loading it originally while you're there. These are the broken ones. So far the only broken ones. But the system is working. Pretty good. They fit so nicely though. So we have one more. We have two that are questionable. So I'm back up here at the place where we picked up all of those uh, hydrothermal panels and we are gonna get that tank today. So I did a lot of research and I found out that the system that we're installing really requires that size tank to do all of our um, panels that we have. We can't go through just a small heat exchanger. It's gotta be one that size. So the thing weighs uh, empty about 750 pounds uh, with, but it, right now it's full. So that's why I got the generator on right now so that we can uh, get it emptied. I have a pump running. So hopefully I can get it emptied here shortly and we can get this thing uh, loaded on the trailer. So it's a rainy afternoon. Perfect time, I guess, to go ahead and try to get this little uh, project accomplished. So I put a strap around it, put a little piece of scrap plywood behind it. Um, I'm gonna put a winch on the other end of the trailer here, and we should be able to winch this thing directly on uh, once it's actually empty. But right now, this thing is still almost half full. So I'm hoping uh, it's not gonna take more than another hour to get it emptied, but we will see. Chevy's up in the truck, taking a little nap, staying out of the rain. You need, you need to come out, go body. Fun stuff. This thing's been emptying out for almost three hours now. We're at the last little bit. I think there's about a half a foot left in it. So uh, yeah, I actually looked this up. It's actually uh, 1,500 gallons. So I was a little off on uh, how much I thought was in there before. But yeah, it's a 1,500 gallon tank. So we're down to the bottom of it. It's just water. Had to go to my second pump because the other pump somehow something happened to it. But we're gonna go ahead and try to get this thing slid on here in the next 15 minutes, I think. Getting there, getting there. 
So we got it on the trailer. It's in one piece, but we had the foam bottom come out on this thing. So I'm hoping I didn't poke a hole in the bladder because if I did that, then all of this work is for nothing because it's not gonna hold any water. But I won't know that until we actually have, get it set up and put some water back into it and see if there's any holes. So uh, I hope I didn't pop it, but we'll see. So I'm gonna get this thing strapped down and head back home. So we got the tank back to our homestead. I'm gonna go ahead and get the top off of this thing, unscrew it and see what I can do to get the components out of it. Cause I think that's gonna be the only way to move this without destroying uh, the rubber liner that's inside of it because there is no bottom on this thing. So I'm gonna remove the top and then I'll probably bring the excavator over with the forks and we'll see if we can just put some uh, cables on to the uh, steel insert. There's like a, a rack in there that has the coils inside of it. So we'll see if we can pull it out, set it down, and then th this thing should be a lot more manageable and we won't have components falling through the bottom. So that's gonna be our plan. I'm gonna go ahead and get this top off and we'll take it from there. So we got the lid off and it looks like everything came uncoiled in here. So that's fun, but we're going to have to remove all this piping. This should be coiled in nice loops, but each one of these stacks looks like they pretty much collapsed from corrosion. So I'm going to have to try to get this mess out of here and then get the tank inside and then we're just going to reconfigure the whole thing in a different pattern because kind of a little confused on what pipes went where but it really doesn't matter because you have one coil that can do one entire heating loop and another coil that can do another a separate heating loop and that's basically what they had set up here. So there's two lines there. And then there's another two lines. One's there, one's down bottom there. So you're basically just heating water. So this, this tank is, has water in it. And these tubes are closed loop that would have glycol inside of the tubes. So I basically just got to get this mess out of this tank so that we don't poke any holes in the liner. And, uh, We'll address putting it all back together again once we do our build out video. But um, yeah, I'm gonna work on getting this all disassembled and put in the shop and we'll take it from there. Well, I got out all the tangled mess. Uh, I don't think I poked any holes in it. I did see one small little dime size hole in the side of the liner, which I'm gonna have to patch, but that is a mess of tubes, which like all these little bits and pieces, I don't want to stand too close to this thing, but all these little bits and pieces was the racking and it completely dissolved in the water. So we're going to have to build a new one from scratch. Um, but it doesn't seem that complicated the way this thing was built. So now that we have this out, we'll set it aside. Maybe I can salvage any of the glycol that's still in these tubes. And, uh, 
we'll go ahead and start getting ready to get this tank off the trailer. So I am pumping out any last bit of water in the bottom of this tank here. And then we'll go ahead and lift it up with the excavator and uh, bring it inside. All right, we got it all rigged up. I'm gonna hopefully not destroy this thing by lifting it up this way, but we're about to see. That was successful. We got it over here in one piece. Looks like everything is intact. I set it on a couple of uh, cheap little Luan sheets so that we don't poke holes from uh, anything laying on the concrete. I did sweep it beforehand. So on our next video, we're going to install this tank. I have to make a bunch of space over here in the corner. Uh, we are going to install the panels on the other side of the building. So it's gonna be along that wall on the outside. Uh, we do have our system that's over here in the corner, which this is going to be installed as well. So we'll install this with the tanks. So we have the, our expansion tanks that are sitting over here. So we will make a bunch of room and get this whole system uh, put back together again. If you like the video, please thumbs up and subscribe. Stay tuned for the install video of this massive heating system.